everyone, Dylan from the Smart Economy Podcast. We are at day two at Consensus 2024 here in Austin, Texas, and we're joined by Lucas Folks, the CPO and co-founder at Helica. Lucas, how's it going today, man? It's going great, thanks for having me. Yeah, I'm psyched to chat with you. We're gonna be talking Web3, gaming, data analytics, but before we kind of like delve in, can you just give us like an Eli 5, 30 second elevator pitch about who you are and what you do? Yeah, so my name is Lucas Folks. I'm the Chief Product Officer, co-founder. Uh, my background is analytics across all different industries, real estate, fintech, oil and gas, but I spent the last long while in gaming. And so Helica is a gaming infrastructure platform. So what we really focus on is making sense of on-chain, off-chain, and social data to contextualize that around a user and really help a game studio find what is engaging the users and give them more of that. Yeah, and so I think something that's really cool about Lucas's experience is that he comes from Zynga. So before we kind of like delve into like the data analytics and what you provide to blockchain and AAA games, can you just tell us like what it was you worked on at Zynga and maybe for people like me who've been on the internet since the 90s, they think Zynga is something completely different. Yeah. But when you were working there, you were working in a similar field that you're in now. So could you just share a little bit about what that was? Yeah, so my time at Zynga, I worked on a game called Hit It Rich. It's a social casino slots game. Uh, we ended up growing it to for a forever franchise, which means it made 100 million in one year, um, which means Zynga will never get rid of it. Zynga is largely considered like the best at monetization and optimization and engagement because they're like a truly data focused company. One thing that's really interesting about Zynga, it's been around forever. I think they own the uh, original Atari building in San Francisco. Wow. They were there forever and so like, I think they started in late 2000s, they blew up on Facebook and then Facebook games kind of fizzled out. Zynga wasn't doing great and then they ended up taking off again and just doing a really good run. So that's what I specialized in there. I was running all the data for that game and that's that's really kind of what gave me a lot of my understanding of gaming today, uh, as well as like a lot of my background in data and other companies. Because if I've learned anything across all the different industries, it's all the same problem. Slightly different outcomes, slightly different objectives, but data, making sense of it and taking action on it, it's the same across every industry. Sure, maybe for like you, this is kind of like a simple one-on-one -on -one level question, but somebody who's not in the gaming and data space might not understand the complexity or maybe even the relationship between your data of your users and how that might be implemented into games. So like, why is this information about your users so important for games? Yeah, a great, a great question. And it's, su it's not super, it is to me now, it's really clear, but it wasn't super obvious initially. A great example is like games are a unit economics question and that boils them down into something really boring. But the reality is you have to have something engaging enough that whatever you acquire users for is less than what they want to pay you to play mm -hmm. or like be a part of the ecosystem. And that's something that like, that balance goes crazy very quickly because you need you know, 50, 60, 70,000 players, daily active users to play, say they're even three dollars each, which is very, very low, like that's unreasonable. You're spending a lot of money to acquire those users. You have to have something that gets them engaged enough and interested enough to want to do more and spend more. And that's really what it boils down to. So like the only the thing I love about it is what people immediately jump to thinking right there is like microtransactions. No, I'm not saying that's a good thing. What I'm saying is you gotta create something engaging enough that makes people stick around where they want to spend money, because that's what you do for entertainment. And so <laughs> That's the beauty of it is you can go the route of microtransactions, but if you over monetize with no value, you're gonna burn all your users, you're spending more money again. You have to give them something sustainable and fun and that's really where we step in. What is engaging? What leads to a better user? What makes them happier? What makes them have more fun? That way we can provide that to them and they want to spend money instead of being forced to spend money. Mm -hmm. So for like someone who plays with like Web3 games, they're interested in like earning crypto for their play, pay to play experience experience or maybe they want to have like a cool PFP but we were talking earlier and like gaming is more than just integrating a PFP into yeah. the game or just saying I'm gonna launch a token so what are the cool ways that we're leveraging like web3 technology or blockchain based solutions to integrate them into games and like what are some of your customers really excited about when it comes to like using blockchain solutions yeah a great example I would say is like proof of play they have a game pirate nation 
most of the game is driven by their assets. So their, their gold is the currency, it's currency you can buy. Their pirates become your character. The ships that you buy build the ship that you're integrating with and like fighting with and playing with. Like really everything for them is purely on chain. They're doing it very, very deeply. There's a lot of games that are like, buy this PFP, it'll kind of look like your character in the game. I mean, that's one way to integrate Web3, but I'm not sure that that makes a true Web3 game. And so. <laughs> The, co the companies and customers that we're seeing that are doing it right, I think are building something truly novel that like requires on-chain to do it. So, of course, you could put these ships on, like inside the game and let them be one by, but then you don't build this like pirate level bartering system, which is like, hey, this guy has this, I have this, we'll swap for it, or I'll give him this and pay some gold for it. And so, I think that's really the core of it is like finding that niche that is something new and novel and fun that gives ownership to the users and gives them the assets and lets them feel like they're really driving the narrative themselves but also like it's something you couldn't just straight out of the box do in traditional gaming. Sure, so the Helica platform, how does it leverage uh, like blockchain networks? Do you guys like work on a particular network? Do you guys like scrape information from all different sorts of networks? And also uh, maybe like what's a good like solution blockchain network for these games? Because Ethereum is slow and expensive, but maybe like a super fast network is something that people don't hear. So yeah, yeah just a little bit about the blockchains you get information from and what are the best Those blockchains. are great questions. We are chain agnostic. I think right now we support eight different chains, but we're expanding that constantly. I think pretty soon we'll have 15, 20. Uh, we've got three in the pipeline right now that we're actively working on. Um, and the way we do that is we have a lot, we've built our, our backend chain agnostic so we can take in almost anything. EVMs are way easier, but we're moving to other categories as well. And we really bring in all that data but not just the raw data, we like we make it make sense. So transaction values, sales values, mint prices, things like that. Um, when it comes to where a game should build, I think there's a lot of great places to build, but right now I'm very bullish on Arbitrum and the Arbitrum network. So they currently have a proposal out, the Gaming Catalyst uh, program. Mm -hmm. That is a huge cash pull for investing in, in like in incentivizing building games on Arbitrum. I think it's going to be like $250 million they're deploying. And what, I've, what I like about them is I've seen games move from other chains to them with really, really pretty easy migrations and very like simple to build around. So mm -hmm. they've built a lot of systems that make the ergonomics for engineers easier, as well as they really are investing, they're putting their money where their mouth is. Like they're not just throwing out grants to anybody that'll do anything. They really want to bring good games for their users and that's something I'm really excited about right now. There's a lot of great chains that are doing great things, but they're, they're really leaning in. Sure, so uh, something that I thought was really cool about Helica is like, well, let's take a step back. When people think about like Web3 gaming, their experience might be Axie Infinity or some project from the previous cycle that might have imploded, or maybe it's a small game that raised some funds and wasn't able to quite launch. Yeah. So can you share a little bit about like your company, the size of your company? Are you guys growing? Like, I think it's really impressive the yeah. amount of folks you have working in-house. So just yeah. talk a little bit about that. Yeah, we, uh, we recently announced the raise, $8 million led by Pantera. We're up to somewhere between 40 and 50 people depending on number of contractors. And really, we're building a very sustainable business. Like uh, our customers, we integrate deeply with them. We are not the cheapest product for sure, but we are probably the most valuable. <laughs> and so that's what I like to say. And um, I think one of the things that's interesting, like the people that saw Axie Infinity and all these other games come and go, I kind of chalk it up to being like the dot-com boom. It's mm -hmm. like that there was utility there, the environment is moving very fast, what was working doesn't work, and that's really where we come in. We're measuring that for you. What is working? Does this play-to-earn model still work, or at some point, does that just become a user acquisition strategy and you now have to come to a more sustainable model, which is play, earn opportunity, and if you make purchases, that helps drive it up, or if you bring in more friends so that we're not paying for user acquisition, that earns you stuff, and so that's really what our core focus is, making those games sustainable while us also being sustainable. Cool, and who are the types of people you wanna connect with, meet with, who do you want reaching out to? 
Yeah, I mean, honestly, anybody in this space. I can talk <laughs> about this forever. I think it's pretty obvious. Uh, this is all I do. And so very passionate about the space. Helica is really like my baby and a brainchild of mine and Corey and a couple other people inside the company. And so anybody that wants to talk gaming, crypto, Web3, please reach out to me. Lucas Folks on Twitter, um, L-U-C-A-S-F-U-L-K-S. You'll find me on LinkedIn. My last name is very unique, so it won't be hard. <laughs> is uh, wrapping up last thing, is this your first consensus? It is not my first consensus. I will admit it's my first time inside of consensus. <laughs> I've been around it a lot. We always have major events. We always have a lot going on, but this is the first time I've actually walked in. And that's funny because I've been to GDC like five times and this year was the first time I also went into GDC in San Francisco. So I guess it's a year of first for conferences. Sure, so uh, what's like the vibe in 2024 for building games in Web3 here at consensus? What's just like your I mean, overlook? I wish I could take that camera and just pan all the way around but it's it's back I mean it's a uh, it's interesting GDC went the same way last year was a rough year kind of the bear market but I'm a firm believer those that built through it will survive and if you look around the buzz is here there's major companies here there's companies that you don't know are web 3 that are starting to be web 3 game studios are popping up everywhere it's a it's a good year to be in this space for sure awesome well you guys know where to find Lucas thank you so much for coming to yeah appreciate it thanks today. for having me um, and if you want to see more of the interviews we've done here at Consensus, head over to Neo News Today's YouTube page. And of course, if you want to hear some of our full-length podcast episodes, head over to smarteconomypodcast.com.